fluids barometers. Before we uh, dive into barometers, there are a couple of questions to ponder. Uh, we're going to review Pascal's principle. So again, what is Pascal's principle? How, do barometer, how does a barometer work? And what do pressure gauges measure? So again, a review of Pascal's principle. If you recall, Pascal's principle basically said that uh, the uh, pressure applied to a confined fluid, this confined fluid down here, uh, as the uh, pressure in, uh, increases at one point, the fluid pressure increases throughout the entire fluid here. So in other words, the output pressure is going to be equal to the input pressure. We're going to apply that to barometers, and barometers, quite simply, are a way that we can measure atmospheric pressure. So we're going to see how barometers work. This is called a mercury barometer, and so with this illustration that I got off the internet, we can see that we have a, a bath or pool of mercury in this bowl, and that uh, we had a, an evacuated tube right here so that, like a test tube it's a lot longer and uh, there is no air in this end uh, of the uh, test tube in fact the test tube the way you do this is you fill the test tube full of mercury and you turn it upright while it's in the bath and then the mercury will, mercury will come to rest at a particular location where the pressure becomes equal to zero at this location up here so what we see is right here at the interface between the surface of this mercury bath and uh, the where this bar of mercury, if you will, this column of mercury is right here. Right at this location, we know that there must be a balance of forces here. In other words, the pressure in uh, due to the uh, air pressure here pressing down on all of this mercury in the pool must be equal to the pressure of the weight of the mercury within the tube here. So we're going to balance those out uh, using uh, uh, Archimedes principle here. Um, so the P in is going to be equal to the P out. The air pressure here pressing down on this mercury is going to be equal to the pressure created by the weight of the mercury within the tube here, which we know is the gauge pressure. So, knowing that, we can solve for how high the mercury would rest in the tube by dividing both sides by rho g, and I flip sides here as well. So, dividing both sides by rho g, we can see that the height is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So, if this is at sea level, then the atmospheric pressure is 101,300 newtons per meter squared, or pascals. And we divide that by the density of mercury, which is 13,600 kilograms per meters cubed, and then times g, 9.8 meters per second squared. And after doing the math there, what we get is 0.76 meters, which is equivalent to 760 millimeters of mercury. So one atmosphere of pressure at sea level will cause a column of mercury uh, to be suspended uh, 760 millimeters in this tube and that's why this is a common measure for one atmosphere of pressure. In my left hand I have a Nerf gun dart and in my right hand, now in my left hand, I've got a little cow glass here. So uh, cow glass is empty and I put the Nerf dart inside the cow glass just to give us a reference so we can see the water inside. I'm going to fill up the cow glass and put the, keep the Nerf dart inside of it here while, the, while it's filled with water. I'm going to tip it up and pull the glass up and you can see that the Nerf dart is up inside the glass with a bunch of water up inside the glass. So why is that water and the Nerf dart, dart staying up inside that glass? Well, it's a pretty simple explanation that the atmospheric pressure is pressing down on all the other water that's in the sink and pressing that uh, 
water up into the glass and holding it up into the glass since there's no way for air to get in to this side here. So uh, that very clearly is how you can create a barometer. Of course, uh, we have to use mercury, which is much more dense than water, to make a barometer out of this. So when I pull the glass out and uh, air can come up inside, the dart will fall out. Now, that is either physics or it's a holy cow. Holy cow. Sorry about that. Anyway, on a particular day, let's do some calculations for barometers here. And on a particular day, the atmospheric pressure was 85% of the atmospheric pressure at sea level. Um, and we want to know how high a homemade uh, water barometer uh, would read. We knew that we had 760 millimeters of mercury, but mercury is much more dense than water. And we knew that our cow cup could only hold a little bit and it could hold a heck of a lot more. It would rise a lot higher. So let's do this calculation and see how high a water barometer would uh, hold. Go ahead and pause the video and when you get done with your calculation, come back and see how you did. So how did you do? Starting back with our barometer equation that we had previously, but now, wow, it's got to be a lot taller here. Remember, this is an evacuated tube right here. In other words, there isn't the atmospheric pressure on it. It is simply the atmospheric pressure down on this pool right here, which is going to suspend or hold up the water in the tube. So those two pressures have to be equal right here at the interface. And again, solving for H, again, it's 85% of an atmosphere that we were using this barometer with in this particular case. And the density of water, uh, specific uh, density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed times G, and we get 8.79 meters. Wow, almost 9 meters, almost uh, uh, what's 27 feet tall. So uh, yeah, not a very practical device when it have to when it have to be that tall, but nevertheless, that water would hold up in the tube here to 8.79 meters. That's an awful lot of pressure down here holding that water up. So I do have a challenge question for you. It's very similar to the last problem, so it's not too much of a challenge. Instead of 85 percent, you could use a full atmosphere in that last calculation and uh, see how high is the maximum amount of water uh, at this maximum atmospheric pressure. How high would that uh, water column be? Give that a try on your own. Pressure gauges. Now pressure gauges are a little bit different than barometers in the sense that pressure gauges usually have uh, atmospheric pressure throughout uh, and so this atmospheric pressure is the same uh, at the input and the output of this pressure gauge. So a pressure gauge doesn't give us absolute or total pressure. A pressure gauge actually will just tell us the relative pressure here, and that's called the gauge pressure. We've been talking about that before, but now we can see why they call it gauge pressure. This uh, density times gravity times the uh, depth um, uh, in our previous work it's called gauge pressure and that's what's measured by gauges such as this tire gauge here reading 33 pounds per square inch or 33 psi it's not measuring the absolute pressure it, we we don't take into account this uh, um, atmospheric pressure we only take into account the gauge pressure and uh, so it wouldn't read 47.7 it would read the 33 pounds per square inch likewise when you take your blood pressure we don't uh, consider the atmospheric pressure when you take your blood pressure we only look at how much more your blood pressure is over the atmospheric pressure and that is the gauge pressure so when you have a reading of like 120 over 80 that's 120 millimeters of mercury um, and uh, and not the 880 millimeters of mercury which would have been the absolute pressure of uh, your blood uh, system um, taking into account the atmospheric pressure. So, to get gauge pressure, 
you take the density times gravity times the height or depth. So now a little time for you to explore. I had the opportunity to climb up the top of uh, Mount Whitney and uh, experience the uh, low pressure up there. Um, so why don't you get on, uh, why don't you pause the video, um, open a new tab and search air pressure at the top of Mount Whitney. And uh, you can see, wow, how much uh, less that is than down at sea level. So hopefully you know by now what Pascal's principle is. Hopefully you know how a barometer works. And the idea that uh, pressure gauges don't measure absolute pressure. So what is the gauge pressure? And scratch with his parting thought. All right, learning is about continuous improvement.